I tell you, we'd be better off if we just claimed the precious blood of Jesus Christ. He would help. I'm talking to us Christians. Uh, we look to the world for answers. We do. We look to the doctors for answers. I was talking with a brother just before the service. A lot of folks would give up their medications if they just trust Jesus. Serious. Amen. I mean, the high blood pressure, the anxieties and all that. If you get right with God, you find out you don't have those problems. Amen. I'm telling you the truth. You sit there and argue with me and the whole time you're, oh, I'm, I don't know what I'm going to do. Amen. I, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to tr trust Jesus. Amen. Amen. He's the answer. Well, praise the Lord. We did enjoy this morning having a good time already tonight. I mean, just getting started good and already having a good time tonight. I believe we're going to have a good time all week. I believe God intends on His children to have a good time. Amen. And so, let's do it. Amen. If you don't, it'll be your fault. All right? But we are glad to see you got a good crowd. Not good looking, but a good crowd. Amen. You may not help how you look, but you can help the way you show up or don't show up. Amen. So we're glad you showed up. All righty. Well, we are glad that you're here tonight and praise the Lord for that. I, I want to I share some scriptures with you tonight and we're going to turn a good bit to uh, get started. I don't really know where to start. I'll tell you what, let's begin over in Psalms chapter 138 and verse number 2. Psalms chapter 138 and verse number 2. We're going to read, uh, read some scriptures and I, I always... Uh, have folks to stand when I read, but I'm not going to do that right now. We're going to we're going to stand in a little while, but right now I want to just read several yeah, scriptures Bible. jumping around to kind of lay the groundwork for the message tonight. You know, if if I were the devil, and I, sometimes my wife thinks I am, but <laughs> if I were the devil, I, there's one thing I would would try my best to keep folks from doing. That's really not my knees knocking. I'm nervous, but that's not it. I thought there's a termite loose there for a while. There's one thing I would do. If I were the devil, there's one thing I'd do to you Christians. I'd keep you so busy you wouldn't have time to read the Word of God. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Now listen to me. Yeah. I'd keep you so busy. I, I'd do this. I'd have you to get up a little late in the morning. So you wouldn't have time to read the Word of God before you go to work. And I, and, and then I'd have you to uh, be busy all day and, and then come in in the evening and I'd have you so tired and so many other things to do around the house that again you wouldn't have time to read your Bible so you're going to read it in the morning. Then I'd have you to oversleep in the morning and you wouldn't have time to read it again. And on and on and on. And all I'd have to do is to get you to do that for a few days and all of a sudden you broke the the habit, if you will, the habit of reading your Bible and then it's over with. And then I'd have victory over you. Yeah. Amen. Right. I'd, I'd just keep you away from the Word of God if I were the devil. Sure. You know, he, it's amazing. He's winning that battle in our lives, folks. Listen, the Word of God is the answer. You say, well, what's the question? It doesn't matter what the question is. The Word of God is the answer. Amen. Yeah. We don't put enough emphasis on the Word of God. The Bible tells us in Psalms chapter 138, verse number 2, 138 and 2, says, I will worship toward the holy temple and praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth. For thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. The Bible says this about the word of God, that it has been magnified above all of his name. The Bible tells us, there's none other name under heaven given whereby we must be saved. I'm telling you, the Bible says here that the Word of God is more important than the very name of Jesus. Amen. Right. It, I mean, God, God has magnified it. He has made it much bigger than Jesus Himself. Amen. Then we look, if you will, with me in Psalms chapter... Well, we won't look there. You know the verse in Psalms chapter 119, verse 89. He says, Forever thy word is settled in heaven. But look with me in Matthew chapter 24 and verse number 35. Matthew 24 and verse number 35. The Bible tells us there in Matthew 24, 35, 
Verily I say to you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Verse 35. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. Amen. Do we get it tonight that the Word of God is real? And my friend, that we need to believe it. Look with me in John chapter number 1. John chapter number 1 and verse number 1. In the Gospel of John chapter 1 and verse number 1 and 2. The Bible says in chapter 1 and verse 1, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. Look at verse 14. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. We know that Word is Jesus Christ. Amen? But I want us to notice how important that the Word of God is. Hebrews, look within Hebrews chapter number 4. Chapter number 4 and verse number 12. Chapter 4 and verse 12 of Hebrews, the Bible says, For the Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and mara, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Well, I'm telling you, there's power in the Word of God. The, the Word of God is power. Yes. It is powerful, but it is power. Amen. We need to not neglect it, Christians. Listen, yeah. it's amazing that folks will spend millions of dollars on, on drinks and, and special foods to build up their bodies and make them strong. And, my friend, and, and they're going to die anyway. I mean, it don't matter how, how healthy you are, you're going to die anyway. Amen. But they'll spend millions of dollars. Every year, Americans spend millions of dollars on trying to build this flesh up. Uh, we try to build up the immune system. And, and I know that these things are necessary. I'm not saying that. But I'm saying we do all of this, my friend, to make the flesh strong. And we neglect the spiritual man. My friend, there, the Bible is our source of energy. Right. Yes. Amen. The Bible, the Word of God is our source of energy. Everything you know about God, you know where you got it from? The Bible. You say, no, my Sunday school teacher, where did they get it? From the Bible. It all came from the Bible. I mean, all that we know, when we, can, we talk about creation, in the beginning God created, how do we know this? You say, yeah, Brother Danny, that's what I want to know. How do we know this? Because the Bible. was that little song the children sing? For the Bible tells me so. Yeah. Right. Jesus loves me. This I know. We preached John 3, 16 this morning. For God so loved the world. How do we know that God loves us? For the Bible tells us so. You say, well, how do you know it's truth? Because it's the Word of God. Amen. 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 But the Word of God is so, so important. Now open with me, if you will, to the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah. We're going to be getting to the message. Jeremiah chapter number 23. Jeremiah chapter 23. I want us to look at two verses. Chapter, chapter 23, verses 28 and 29. Jeremiah chapter 23. If you'll find that spot in Jeremiah chapter 23, Verses 28 and 29, if you'll stand with us tonight, we'll read these two verses and get to the message, all right? If I were the devil, I'd say stay away from the Bible. Don't read Young people, don't read it. There's more important things to do. Get your, get your game boys and game girls and whatever other <laughs> games you got. Those things are more important than reading the Bible. I mean, really, if I were the devil, I'd convince you. Uh, most of the world's already convinced of that, aren't they? Amen. Amen. Oh, I'd get so busy on our computers and on our tablets and on our uh, iPods and iPads and all these other... I'd get so busy on all of this junk that, would, I, that there would be no time to read the Bible. My friend, listen, the Bible says this in Jeremiah 23 and verse 28. The prophet that hath a dream, let him tell a dream. And he that hath my word, let him speak my word faithfully. For what is the chaff to the wheat, saith the Lord. Look at verse 29. Is not my word like as a fire, saith the Lord, and like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces? 
Let's pray. Father, I want to thank you tonight, Lord, for your goodness and mercy. And one of those goodnesses you've given toward us, Lord, is your word. Lord, it's amazing to me. Here I am, just a simple individual, born and raised in the wonderful state of Alabama. Lord, seemingly to a lot of northern folks, we're backwards and don't know very much. Lord, it amazes me that you put within my hands your word. God, I'm thankful. I, I'm not uh, wishing it hadn't happened. I'm sure thankful. But God, it just it blows my mind to think that everyone here have, have access to your word. Lord, even folks in other nations and countries and different languages have your word. God, you've made it so easy for us today. And yet, there's so many that do not know you, and there's so many that deny you. But Lord, I want to thank you tonight for putting your word, not only in my hands, but for putting it in my heart. And I pray tonight, dear Heavenly Father, you'd help us with this message. I pray, dear God, that you'd speak to our hearts tonight through your word. I pray, Lord, if there be someone here tonight that does not know you as their personal Savior, that they'd realize tonight that you are the Savior. Lord, that you'll save them and forgive them of their sins and give them a home in heaven. Lord, just as sure as we're standing here, they'll trust you. God, we just pray tonight that you'll help us Christians to realize what it is that we have in your word, this power that's at, at our disposal. Lord, as we, as we read it, Miss Pam saying, oh, Father, about I claim the blood. How does she know to claim the blood of Jesus? Father, we know it through your written word. We thank you tonight. God, speak to our hearts as Christians tonight. Lord, help young people tonight to get on fire for you to realize, God, you're not only not dead, but you're not even sick. Lord, I pray tonight, Father, that you'd help us to realize how important our life is to you. And Lord, that we might live for you. Father, help us in this hour. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. Maybe may be seated. We look here in Jeremiah. God's got a problem. I, I say He's got a problem. He, he's having a problem. He's having a problem with the prophets. Back in the Old Testament, that would be the equivalent to us preachers today. All right? He's having a problem with the prophets. The prophets are they're telling folks about their dreams that they're having. And they're putting an emphasis on the dreams. And they're trying to get folks to follow their dreams as they have these dreams. Literally, what they're trying to do is to get folks to follow them. Amen. I find that we've got that same problem today in our society in which we live. Men are, are claiming to be uh, preachers and, and my friend, we're trying to get folks to follow us when in reality what we're supposed to be doing is getting folks to follow Jesus. Amen. I see it by the scores as you turn on the TV and you begin to listen to those TV preachers on there. Many of them, I'm not going to say all of them, but many, and I would dare say most of them, my friend, they've got a following. And, and they, listen to me, they, they're, they're willing to have that following. They like that idea of having that following. And my friend, they give, they give in a message just enough truth to say there's some truth to that but not enough truth to make it all true. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. And people by the scores are following after them. I've even heard some of them that follow after them say this, something like this. I don't care what the Bible says. I just know so and so says. Yeah. Yeah. God help us tonight. Yeah. It's not important what this preacher has to say. Yeah. But it is important what God's got to say. Right. Amen. Amen. You better, you better give ear to what God's got to say, Amen. my friend. For man will mislead you. Listen, if man is not careful, he'll mislead you, my friend. Uh, it'll be by accident, but he'll mislead you. That's right. But many today know they're misleading. Amen. That's right. They're, they know it. Yeah. I mean, it is. It it amazes me how that. People get caught up in this thing. And, and let me tell you something, and don't get offended at me, but the reason is, you and I don't read our Bible enough to know the truth about things. And my friend, it's easy for somebody to get up and say, the Bible says, you know John 3.16, the Bible says, for God so loved the world. And all of a sudden they switch and they get into something else that's not in the Bible. And we go away saying, man, did you hear that? I recall years ago we... I was going to a preacher's meeting as I was pastoring the church and our oldest son was a young teenage boy and he was going with me and 
two other preachers were going with us and we were driving up from Alabama to Tennessee to a preacher's meeting, got up there. There was a preacher that preached and he's one of them, I call them hackers. <laughs> if you preach that way, that's your business, all right? But it wears me out. I just got to be honest with you. I'm going to breathe for them. And they're like, amen. But this one, he gets up there, and I, well, Lord, I, God, I, I, and he preaches for about an hour like that. I'm wore out. All I've done is sit on the pew. I'm wore out. And he gets through, and, and we leave that evening. We leave after the service, and we're driving back to Alabama. We stop at a gasoline station to fuel up and go in and, and give us a, 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 we call it a cold drink down there. It's a, a pop, a soda, a uh, you know what, a Coke, uh, whatever you call them up here, amen? But it's either Coca-Cola or Pepsi or something, R-O-C Cola, amen? Y'all don't know what that is, but anyway. <laughs> to get something like that in a bag of peanuts or something to just kind of get us on down the road. And as we stop, one of the preachers that's with us, he says, boy, that preacher that preached there at the last, man, didn't he preach? Oh, boy, wasn't that powerful? And I kept my mouth shut. <laughs> and I looked at him and I said, what was it about? <laughs> I mean, now, I've heard some of those guys, ah, 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 and they preach a good message in, the, in spite of the, ah, 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 amen. But this guy, I did not know what he preached. And I said to him, I said, what, what was it that he preached? I, don't, I didn't get a message out of it. And he said, well, I really don't know, but man, it was powerful. <laughs> this is a preacher, brother, Ron. And I said, you know what? How can it be powerful if there's nothing to it? Yeah. Amen. Amen. I mean, he read a scripture, and someone said he read a scripture and he preached from it. He did, way from it. <laughs> I mean, but listen to me. We're just as guilty. We hear a preacher preach and we like some of the things he says and it doesn't matter whether it lines up with the Word of God or not, my friend. And we go away and we put so much emphasis on what Brother Danny said when in reality it ought to be what God's got to say. Here, God's having a problem in His Word with the prophets. You can read the verses prior to this. They're, they're dreaming their dreams and they're telling the folks and they're trying to get folks to follow after their dreams and follow after them. And, in other words, they're turning them. Listen to me. If you don't turn folks to Jesus, you're turning folks away from Jesus. And they were turning folks, the prophets were turning folks from God back in Jeremiah's day. As God is pinning these words down, my friend, he's, he's warning Jeremiah, he's letting Jeremiah know this, and you know what? It's amazing. You say, well, that's for Jeremiah. If it were just for Jeremiah, you and I wouldn't have an account of it. But it's for you and I. God knew this day was coming and knew that we were going to be the same in the same boat, my friend, so to speak, as those back in the Old Testament days that we're going to follow after other preachers. But I want you to notice something the two verses we read tonight. Verse 28, he says again, The prophet that hath a dream, let him tell a dream. And he that hath my word, let him speak my word faithfully. Amen. Amen. Yeah. And then he says, and this, this used to get me, this last part of the verse, What is the chaff to the wheat, saith the Lord? What is the chaff? I don't know if you know anything about this. I, I'll be honest with you. I knew a little bit, and I, I began to. I looked up that word "chap," and all that means is debris. That's that's what the Webster Dictionary gives the debris that's gathered with the grain of wheat. In other words, the trash. Yes. Amen. That's exactly what it is. The trash that's gathered with the wheat. We know wheat can be a good thing. Amen. Yes. Wheat can be that that strengthens us. Yes. But the chaff. The debris, the trash, is useless. You know what God's saying? God's saying those dreams are useless. Amen. They're nothing but trash. You say, well, I put a lot of stock in dreams. 
Well, I don't know why. I'm serious as I can be. You say, well, don't you believe God gives dreams? No. God gives us His Word. There you go. Amen. God gives us His Word. You know what I like about this book? Listen to me. This book is for you. This book is for you. This book is for you. This book, and I could go to every one of you and tell you the same thing. This book is for you. This book is for me. Dreams don't seem to be that way. Right. Dreams change. The meaning of them changes. Amen. But the Word of God is the same. He says it, it's always the same. It never changes. Amen. Well, aren't you glad that we have a book? I don't mean to just say a book, but it's the Word of God. Aren't you glad we've got the Word of God that never changes? I mean, tomorrow when I get up, I don't have to worry about the standard of God being changed. His Word has changed. Now I've got to get, I got to reprogram everything. No, 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 no. It'll be the same tomorrow as it was today. Whether Jesus comes or not, it'll still be the same. Amen. Amen. Boy, it's so reassuring. And then the Lord says in verse 29, He tells us that in verse 28 that, that the dreams are like trash or, or that debris that's gathered with the wheat. The wheat's the important thing. And then He comes back in verse 29 and He says, Is, is not my word like as a fire, saith the Lord? His word is like a fire. Boy, it's not cold yet. If we were to wait another month or so, we'd need a fire out here. Amen. I mean, boy, we would appreciate it if we had us a good old, good old wood burning heater right along here, and that thing was a burning, and the smoke was just a boiling out the top of it, and good old flame in here. You know what we would all want to do? Even in a Baptist church, we'd want to sit on the front row. <laughs> Amen. Amen. We'd want to get as close to that fire. Why? Because that fire is oh so warm. Boy, have you ever been outside in the wintertime? That's a dumb question, wasn't it? Amen. <laughs> if you live up here, you go outside in the wintertime. You don't have a choice. But, but you outside, you get cold. I mean cold. We say chill to the bone. And that means you can't go in there and say, oh, oh man, I'm glad I got warmed up. It takes a while. Amen? But if you, ever, if you ever went in after being so cold and you get up to that heater, you almost could hug that thing for a little while. But you get up there and all that fire in that heater, oh, ooh, I mean, it's, mm, oh, it's just feeling gooder and gooder and more good. Amen. Remember, I'm from Alabama. <laughs> and it just gets gooder and gooder. And I mean, all of a sudden you say, oh, my, oh, ain't this so good? My friend, that's, the, that's what the fire does. That's what the Word of God will do for you. Yes. Yes. You see, some of us think of it as just, oh, man, that thing burnt me. Yeah. But that same fire will warm you. Yeah. It'll bring comfort to you. Amen? Boy, to bring sweet comfort when you're cold. I'm telling you, Christians, listen to me. The Word of God's good for you. It'll warm you up in an old cold world. When this old world, my friend, tries to chill you down and get you so cold you're indifferent toward God, the Word of God will warm you right back up, my friend, to where, you know what? When, when things are warm, we got a water hose that, uh, with our motor home. That is the most painful thing to have is this kind of water hose. It's stiff when it's 20 degrees outside. <laughs> you, have you ever tried to roll up one? Huh? This hose is stiff when it's 75 degrees outside. <laughs> Amen. Boy, I, I, sometimes I have to take that thing loose if we're getting ready to leave and I have to unhook it and lay it out in the sunshine and let that heat, that fire from heaven, warm it up. And you know what it does? It makes it pliable. That means I can get that thing and I can run it around my arm and roll it up and put it away. You see, the Word of God makes us pliable, or should I say it this way, workable. Without the Word of God, we're not workable. Our attitudes stink. 
We're hard to get along with. Some of you are anyway. <laughs> but we're hard to get along with. Amen. Word of God will warm you up to where, hey, you're workable. Yeah. Amen. But that same fire that we're talking about, remember, shh, ow, it'll burn. The problem is, folks, listen, the problem is we don't stay up close to it enough. We think we've got to go in. Shh. Amen. And it burns us when, when you've been away from the fire and you get in there and you get too close. Oh, I remember as a little boy, I remember we had a wood burning stove in the, in the living room. That's what we heated with. And we, uh, we'd get that thing going, boy, you'd back up to it. Oh, it gets so good. And you start to walk off and your pant leg hit the back of your leg. Woo! Woo! Amen. You thought you had the Holy Ghost. Woo! 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 Amen. I mean, listen to me. This, that's what the Word of God will do to you too. Hey, it'll blister you if you're not careful. Amen. You, got, you, better, you better stay right with God so you're workable so you don't have to get blistered. Amen. That's what he says right here. It's not my word like it's a fire. Amen. It's amazing to me in a service. You no, know, Ron, you've seen it happen. As you preach the word, somebody said to go here, and they're saying, Hey man, preacher, oh glory to God, that's good. Somebody said over here going, <laughs> <laughs> Same word. Preach over there, preach over here. What is it? It's that fire. Yeah. Some some folks are getting comforted. Oh, preach a little longer, preacher. Oh, this is feeling good. Preach a little longer, preacher. Somebody else is going, oh, ow, oh, ow, oh, oh, that's enough, that's enough. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Yeah. But notice what else he says. Now we're gonna get to the message after a while. <laughs> <laughs> he says it's like a hammer that breaketh a rock in pieces. Whoa. It's amazing what God can do. I mean, it just amazes me what it shouldn't. I've been saved since 1969. I've seen God do miracle after miracle after miracle. And don't come up to me and say, well, wait, there used to be miracles. Honey, there's still miracles happening. Yes. And I've seen God do miracles. It still amazes me. Yep. Oh, I tell you, we witness to family, witness to family. And I tell you, they, they don't want to have anything to do with it. They don't want to hear it. They, they have the family get-togethers. They used to have them on Sundays. They'd have a, a long family reunion. I don't mean it lasted long. Our last name is long. Okay? So it's a long family, like a Smith family reunion. I want you to get on the same page with me, all right? We're not the only ones slow around here. <laughs> They'd have a long family reunion. They always had it on a Sunday afternoon. But they were, they were Christians, some of them. So they'd have it in the afternoon, the middle of the afternoon. I still couldn't go. We lived two hours away. You couldn't leave after church and run there and get there, and have a good time with the family, get back to church and say, well, why didn't you just cancel church? Why? God never done anything wrong to me. Why should I punish him? Now, my family, on the other hand, has done some things wrong, but my but God hasn't. So I just didn't go. And they, they, got, they knew it. My, they just knew, brother, they ain't going to be here. You know what they did a few years ago? They changed it to Saturdays. I wonder why. They changed it to Saturdays. And we're, not, we're usually not home in June, but for the last three years, we've been home in June at the family reunion time. And so we, we got to go the two previous years. We went to the family reunion. And they always, they asked me to have prayer. And usually I pray a little prayer and include the gospel. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. But this year they invited me to speak at our family reunion. Yeah. I said, I'd be honored to. They said, just tell you jokes. And I, I'm not really a, one for comedy and fun, all of that. Kind of the dry kind of fella, you know. <laughs> and, but I said, they said, just tell a few jokes and then, you know, share some things about what's happened in your life and all of that. And I said, I got a handle on this. Amen. <laughs> so I got with God. And I would really begin to pray about it. So that Saturday came and 
Miss Pam and I went. We are there at the family reunion, and we are all gathered together, and we are about to eat. They asked me to lead in prayer, and I give them, I really prayed short this time because I knew I was going to get them that little bit later, so I kept it short. I had word prayer over the meal. Got through eating, and then uh, my sister that's in charge of it. You know, women always got to be in charge of something. Mm. Amen. <laughs> and so my sister was in charge of it, and, and she said, I've asked Danny to share some things with us today. So I got up and I told a few jokes and we had a good time with those and then I just preached the gospel to them. Boy, I'm going to tell you, it blessed, it blessed my heart Amen. that God had finally got my family to a place where I could preach the gospel to them. Amen. And you say, what's that all about? Well, the Bible says that His Word is like a hammer that breaketh a rock in pieces. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm telling you, they were a stone for years. They've been that, that solid old rock stone there. And they didn't want to hear the Gospel. They didn't want to hear anything about when Daddy got saved. They didn't want to hear any of this stuff. But my friend, over, over a period of time, God has worked in their life to where they wanted to hear this day. The Word is like a hammer. Yeah. Now, you know what I like about it? Listen. You can take a huge rock, I mean a huge gigantic rock, and you can take a small hammer, listen to me, you can take a small hammer and just you just keep on, you don't have to, you can just keep on. After a while, it may take a while, but after a while, you'll see that rock start cracking. That huge rock with a little hammer. You'll see it start cracking. You just keep on being faithful. Yeah. And after a while, you know what that big old rock will start doing? It'll start crumbling into little bitty pieces. That's exactly the way the Word of God works. You see, we think we've got to give them all the gospel. In other words, wham! And then, you know what? That's when they get offended. That's when they get offended. But you just share with them the gospel. A little bit of it. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. Don't even finish the Scripture. Amen. You know what you just did? Next time you're around, you know God really loves you. He cares about your soul. You know what you just did? You just keep that up, and that's fine. That old rock's going to crumble. Yeah. Amen. I've seen it in my family. Miss Pam has seen it in her family. Yeah. Yeah. We've seen it where we just stay yeah. faithful at doing what God said do. Got a sister that's 70, Doris is 70. 76. 76 years old. She was about 70 years of age. Had never, had, had never trusted Jesus Christ as her Savior, 70 years of age. I was talking to her over the phone one day. She was in Michigan. I was in Texas, and we are talking over the phone, and I witnessed to her. After all the years of witnessing to her, Miss Pam and I would go over and spend some time with her and her husband and talk, try to talk to them about the Lord. They, oh, we don't need that. We go to church. And they did. They went to some kind of church. It didn't mean much because they hardly ever went anyway. But that day, you know what she did? She trusted Jesus as her personal Savior. We were just up there in Michigan, we were over at this church, and here she came over to that church, and her was preaching a revival. We was over at this other church a couple hours away. She drove over there, and her was preaching a revival. Used to, she wouldn't drive down the road five minutes to hear us. You know what? Listen, it's not because of me. It's because the Word of God yeah. is like a hammer. Yeah. I'm telling you, folks, boy, this Word is powerful, amen? It's like a hammer. I'm so glad, I'm so thankful, the Word of God. If I were the devil, I'd say, stay away from that Bible. Amen. But the Word of God has power. I begin to look into it and I find out the Word of God has power to convict of sin. Amen. That's the reason the world don't like it. They don't like this Bible. Why? Because it convicts them of their sin. Amen. You know what conviction means? Here's my flashlight. It means that the Word of God brings light on your life. It convicts you. It points out 
your sins. That's the reason some of us Christians don't. We, we're not real faithful to the to the house of God. Yeah. Huh? That's the reason you got so many. Er, listen, every church got the same problem. They have a big crowd on Sunday morning. We got a lot on Sunday night tonight because some of you got busy and invited folks and thank God for that and thank God you visitors showed up. We're glad to have you. Yes. But the churches have a big crowd on Sunday morning, but they, you can't get them to come back on Sunday night. You want me to tell you why? Because of conviction. Yeah. True. Amen. Because of conviction. They come on Sunday morning, they get a little under conviction, and the best way they know to handle this is get away from it. And they let it wear off between now and next Sunday morning. Amen. It's the truth. That's why right. some of you ain't going to come back after tonight. <laughs> Amen. You say, well, it's just not convenient. I know how conviction works. Amen. Sure will make it inconvenient to come back. Amen. We get under conviction. I mean, the Word of God, my friend, it, 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 it has the power to bring conviction. In Acts chapter 2, verse 37, Peter is preaching. And the Bible says this in verse number 37 of Acts 2. Now, when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Oh, Peter's up preaching to them on the day of Pentecost, remember? And they got... They got under conviction. And, and the Bible says they were pricked in their heart. That means poked. I mean, it means poked with a sharp object. That's what the Word of God is. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. We read that in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. And, and the Word of God pokes you. It makes you uncomfortable. Amen. These people got uncomfortable, but rather than getting mad, standing up in the service and huffing like an old bull and running out, my friend, they said, Sirs, what must we do? What do we do with this conviction? What do we do with this word? How do we handle it? Peter and those men said, Repent. Repent. Ask God to forgive you of your sins. Well, you know what happened? That oath, fire, will become a Ooh, this feels so good. Ooh, this feels so good. Amen. I remember when I was lost, that preacher was preaching. I got pricked in my heart. Boy, I, I left that night. I got mad. I got cut to the heart. And I got mad and left that night. Didn't appreciate what that preacher had to say. As a matter of fact, I got mad at him. Didn't care if I ever heard him again. And I left that night. God didn't turn me loose. He kept working on me that night, all day the next day, and that next night I went to church. Got there and the preacher started preaching pretty much the same message. And boy, I, you know what? That word began to work in my heart again. And it was uncomfortable. It was poking me. It was making me on that padded pew so uncomfortable as he preached. And I started getting mad again at the preacher. And all of a sudden, it's God, God began to speak and he said, Hey, listen, it's not the preacher that's bothering you. It's my word that's bothering you. And then it's almost like they said, What must I do? And the Holy Ghost of God said, Repent. And that night I came to the altar, knelt down the altar, and I repented of my sins, asked God to save me, and He did. And immediately, ooh, this feels good. Amen. 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 The Bible tells us this also in the book of Acts, chapter number 7, and verse 54. Stephen is preaching on this occasion. And the Bible says, When they heard these things, they were cut to the heart. It's almost the same message. Peter's preaching about Jesus and Him being crucified. Stephen comes along and he's preaching about Jesus and Him being crucified. One group says they were pricked in their heart and they said, what must we do? They said, repent, and they repented. This other group here in Acts chapter 7, when Stephen is preaching, they get under conviction and it cuts them to the heart. Now, they didn't ask what to do. They got mad at the messenger, the preacher, and they began to, they began to stone him, and they killed him. They thought this, just like the world today. Let's get rid of the preachers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen? Kill the messenger. It's not the messenger that's, problem, that's your problem. That's right. It's the message. That's right. 
They thought, let's kill the preacher. Let's get rid of the preacher. We don't have to put up with this. They killed the preacher. One of those that was standing by and, and consenting to it said, it's okay, go ahead and hit him one time for me. Was standing there. He got under conviction. He later got saved over in Acts chapter 9. He gets saved. His name was Saul. And now his name begins to be Paul. And now they got a preacher they can't handle. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Amen. You say, yeah, old Paul. No, 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 no. It wasn't old Paul. It's Jesus himself, the greatest preacher that ever lived. He's a preacher through old Paul now. And my friend, they just can't handle him. Why? Every time you get rid of a messenger, my friend, you'll find out God will put another one in. Amen. I found this out. We get worse as it goes. <laughs> they thought old, old Stephen was bad, but boy, when old Paul came along, they said, whoa, I wish we had that old preacher back. Amen. Yeah. Well, I'm just telling you, the Word of God has the power to convict of sin. No wonder the world says, you can't have that tent meeting outside. All that sound, all that noise. I'll guarantee you we could crank up a radio. Boom, 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 boom. And they would never complain about it. Right. Right. Amen. <laughs> you know what it is? It's the message. It's the message, my friend. The Word of God has power to regenerate or to give new life. Amen. The Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 23, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the Word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. The Word of God. Boy, this blessed old word, my friend, listen to me, it has power to give life. The Bible says in the book of Ephesians chapter 2 that we were dead in our sins and trespasses, but He, he, he uh, what am I trying to, the word I'm trying to think of? That's it. He quickened. That's what it means. He quickened. He made me alive. I remember that night when I was dead in my sins and trespasses. I came down that altar. My friend, I was just an old lowly sinner lost and on the road to hell. If I'd have died, I'd have went to hell right then. My friend, right there in that church, I'd have went to hell. I came down that aisle and I knelt in an old fashioned altar. And my friend, through the preaching of the Word of God, that Word, my friend, it quickened me. It made me alive in Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 You say, why do you come down and run back up there and come down and run back? I don't know. It's better than sitting still like some of y'all are doing. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. 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 Why do you holler and scream and carry on? Hey, because I, I get excited. Why? I'm alive. If you don't like this, I tell you what you ought to do. Go join a cemetery. <laughs> Amen. You ain't gonna have no activity going on there. They're all gonna be just like some of y'all. <laughs> Amen. I'm just here now. Well, we're just not the kind of people to get excited. They're laying out there just rotten. We're not the kind of people to get excited. Bless your heart. The Word of God has power to regenerate or to give life. Not only that, the Word of God has power to produce faith. It, it, it amazes me. Let me, get, let me take a break, okay? We'll take about a 30-minute break and come back. No, I'm just kidding. I want to drink. <laughs> we just paused for station, station identification there. All right, listen. The Word of God has power to produce faith. You know, a lot of Christians believe that you're to pray for faith. How do you get more faith? Well, you pray for it. There's not a scripture in the Bible that even makes you think that that's the way to get faith, let alone tell you it is. It's not. My friend, it, 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 it's, 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 not, it's not just, well, Lord, I need more faith. No, no, no. Listen to me. The Word of God produces faith. Romans chapter 10 and verse 17 says, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. You want more faith? Read your Bible more. Amen. You read, 
Oh, they're coming. Salute! All right, they'll be here in a minute. They're on the way. <laughs> Listen, the Word of God, if we'll read our Bible, we'll read about folks in the Bible. Listen to me. I know you think you're the only one, but you'll read in your Bible, you'll find somebody that has problems just like you do. And you'll read how they overcame it through the blood of Jesus Christ. You'll find that in the Bible. <laughs> You'll find how that they how folks dealt with their family in the Bible. Sure. Amen. You'll find how to deal with your marriage yeah. in the Bible. Yeah. You'll find how to deal with your children in the Bible. Yeah. Children, you'll find how to deal with your parents in the Bible. You know, it would be a bad thing if that thing came through and we didn't hear it. <laughs> Amen. But you'll find all the... Yeah, listen, you say, well, Brother Danny, we have financial problems. Read your Bible! It'll tell you how to deal with your financial problems. Brother Danny, I just have a struggle with decisions. I, I just don't know how to make decisions. Read your Bible! I mean it, folks. I'm as serious as I can be. You will find every answer to every problem that mankind has in the Bible. Read your Bible. The devil says, you don't have time. You got to hurry up in the morning, get on to work. You can't be late. You come in the afternoon again. He says, hey, there's things to be done out here. It's getting wintertime. It won't be long. You can't work when you get in from the, uh, work in the afternoons. So you go ahead and do all this other stuff. He's always got an excuse for us to, kept, to stay away from the Bible. Why? He knows, my friend, if we read our Bible, we're liable to find the help. Will you listen to me? We're liable to find the help that we so desperately need. Yeah. Amen? Preacher, you've seen this over and over and over. God gives you a message. Not for brother or sister so-and-so. He gives you a message. And you get there, and you're preaching that message. Well, I mean, you're preaching that message, and all of a sudden, your face, it, you kind of scan the faces out there. And so-and-so that usually is here is not here. And it's like God quickens your heart, makes you know, boy, they needed this message. It, it's not that He's being mean and harsh and saying, well, you need it, because the truth is, you and I need every message. That's right. yes, Amen. That's right. But this particular message would have really helped you because... It, it dealt or deals with the problems of life that you're having. It's not that he sat down and he studied out a message just for you. It's that God gave him one. Why? Because he's the shepherd. That's right. Amen. To the flock. That's right. And God leads him to the... Listen, before he can lead you to the green pastures, God has to lead him and show him where they are. Before God ever gets you to the still waters, yeah. He's got to have your shepherd here. Right. He's got to know where the water holes are. Right. Right. Amen. Right. Amen. And so God leads him and shows you. God says, hey, here's a good message, a good water message. I didn't say water it down. Yeah. But a good message, a good water message where they can fill their thirsty souls. Yes. Oh, here, here, here's a good message where they can just graze on this and it will encourage them and strengthen them. Yes. And he gives that message to your pastor and he's up preaching it, my friend, yes. and he looks and you're not even there. You know why? The devil had an idea that he was about to get some help and he encouraged you to miss church. Yes. Why? Stay away from the Bible. He knows. You just get enough faith. You liable to be faithful to God. Yeah. You read that Bible, you get to learning what God says about tithing. How that God can bless you because you are workable. <clears throat> Amen. And so... You learn that out through the Word of God. Yeah. Whether it be preached or whether you read it, you get it from the Word of God. 
And you find out something. The average Christian today, the average Christian today has no idea what tithing is about. They think it's only about getting your money. That's not even what tithing is about. Tithing is about me trusting God and Him trusting me. You see, God trusts me with 100%. I just trust Him back with 10 But He trusts me with 100%. He gives me the whole love offering from this week's preaching. He doesn't hold back any for fear that I won't give any. He trusts me with a whole love offering. And then it's up to me. Can I trust Him now with 10 or 15 or 20% of it? I found out a long time ago through reading the Bible, He's trustworthy. Amen. There's some of you today, you're not rolling in the dough. But you're making it. You know why? You learn. You can trust God. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. You can trust God. Amen. Where do you get that from? The Bible. The Word of God has power to produce faith. Yes. You see, some of us just don't have faith. Preacher, I'd like to come every service, but well, I just, you know, the things are so tight around the house. We just can't afford gas to drive. This lady drove about forty minutes. I don't know if that means she lives two miles down the road. She's just a slow driver and water. But I don't know. And I know your friends say, no, that ain't it at all. Maybe she lives 150 miles down the road. And she only, it only takes her 40 minutes to get here. But we use those excuses. Amen. We just can't do that. We, when we pastored, we had a man and his wife. We lived in, right outside of Birmingham, Alabama. 120 miles, 120 miles down the road over here in Atlanta, Georgia, Brother Al and Miss Wanda Ovid lived. And they drove every Sunday morning. Brother Jack and him knows them. They drove every Sunday morning from Atlanta, Georgia to Birmingham, Alabama, two hours. He was my adult Sunday school teacher. I had more trouble out of the others being faithful than I did Brother Owen. Yeah. He traveled every Sunday morning. They came over. They spent the day with us. Sunday evening after church, they drove back to Atlanta, Georgia. Wednesday night, Wednesday evening, he'd get off from work. He'd always make sure he got off from work early so he could drive back to Birmingham, Alabama and be in the service and leave that night after church and drive back to Atlanta, Georgia getting up at sometimes 4 and 5 o'clock in the morning to go to work. They did it. All, they only did it for 11 years. 11 years they did that. My friend, listen to me. You know what that does for me? It gives me faith to know I trust God. I read my Bible and I find Brother Obed to tell you right quick, where did, where did he get that from? From the Bible. He found out he could trust God. Oh, I'm telling you, my friend, the Word of God will produce faith in your life that will help you get through the troubles of life. Yeah. Amen. The problem is, listen, the problem is some of us, we never learn. Why? Because we never read our Bible. Right. Amen. We never read our Bible. It's much like taking something without reading the ingredients. You better look up. You'll wake up dead one of these days. Right. You need to read this Bible and find out. You say, well, I believe everything in it. I claim the whole Bible. But you don't know what it is you're claiming. you you got to know. Amen? Word of God produces faith. And then the Word of God has the power to make us wise. Boy, do we ever need that in this day and time in which we live. Yes. We need some good, godly wisdom. Yeah. Amen? Common sense is a thing that's not so common anymore. Mm. We've got some folks that are so smart they don't even know how to pick their nose. <laughs> I'm serious. Boy, it amazes me how dumb these intelligent folks can be. Most of them are in government and <laughs> politics, but we're still playing with a few of them around here. The Word of God has power. Listen, reading your Bible will make you wise. I'm serious. Well, I recall... When I pastored, I'd deal with folks and, and, and I'd try my best to help them. And I'm not much on counseling. I like to counsel from the pulpit. 
Amen. So when I pastored, I, I counseled every Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. All you had to do is be in the service. And you got the counsel. And by the way, if you'll be faithful to the services, you'll get enough counsel, you won't need that extra counseling. <laughs> Amen. But I remember working with some folks and they're just getting into the church and you begin to deal with them and boy, they sat down and the husband and wife are over here and you're sitting behind the desk. We're talking and, and they've got these questions and they've got problems and all of this and they begin to tell me. We begin to flip through the Bible and read them a scripture or maybe God giving it to us and we could quote it to them and give them scripture. Man, after the, the session was over with, they'd walk out and they'd say, I could hear him and say, boy, Brother Danny, he's smart. I didn't realize he's that smart. <laughs> I'm serious. And you know what? It wasn't me. It's the Word of God. Boy, I'm telling you, it'll make you wise. Amen. I mean, it will make you wise. Listen to what the Bible says in the book of Psalms. Psalms chapter 119 and verse 130. 119 and 130. The entrance of thy words giveth light. It giveth understanding unto the simple. He had me in mind, brother. No, I mean, he, he might as well have said unto Danny Long. Because, and it's in the Word of God. You say, I thought you said it made you wise. Listen to me. It giveth understanding. If you understand something, you're pretty wise. Amen. And then the Bible also says this in Psalms chapter 119 and verse 105. Thy Word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Have you ever noticed there's some folks in this world, I mean, they just, I mean, they, oh. If you, if you notice there's those kind of folks that just, have you, have you ever run into them? I mean, literally run into them? I mean, they're just uh, those kind of folks. You want to say, hey, why don't you look, where are you going? I see Christians that are living that way. They're bumping into problems all the time, troubles. Some of the same stinking trouble over and over and over and over and over again. They never never learn. <laughs> Stay away from that thing. Amen. You know why? They're walking in darkness. They don't see that problem as the same problem. Why? Well, it's because it's different. Because I'm going at it at a different angle. It'll still break the nose. That's right. Amen. We're the same way in life if, we don't, if we're not careful. If we don't read our Bibles and study the Word of God, my friend, hey, listen to me. We have no light in our life. We, we trip over things. Yep. We're falling around in our life. We continually, we're those that are always whining. Each pray for me. I seem like I'm just always failing the Lord. Well, grow up. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Do some growing. Read your Bible. Amen. Amen. I mean, my goodness, after you've been saved for 10 years, you ought to have some maturity about you. That's right. Quit getting offended every time the preacher preaches a message and it hits you. Amen. Start learning. Hey, this is good. Amen. <coughs> Amen. Amen. This is good. Oh, Lord, thank you for feeding my soul. Thank you, Lord, for giving me the message. Lord, give him another one for tomorrow night that just burns me up. Amen. 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 We sing that song. Set my soul afire, Lord. Set my soul afire. And if God ever comes at us with a match, we turn and run and cry. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Amen. God wants us to grow. He wants to set our soul on fire. He wants us to mature. He wants us to be one of those Christians that are sitting there saying, Amen. Preacher, preach it. Praise God. Lord of God, this is good stuff. Amen. He wants us to be there. But when the preacher preaches a message that helps us grow, we get mad. Not much wisdom there, is there? The Word of God has power to make us wise. Right. Why do you think the devil wants us to stay away from his Word? Why do you think the devil is coming up with all these new versions? Why? Why? There's a reason, folks. It's not to help us better understand the Bible. Yeah, no. If that were to be the truth, yeah. we'd stick with the truth. Amen. Amen. The devil's sly. He tries to, oh, oh, dear lady, I see you got one of them old Bibles. Let me get rid of it. Honey, 
You're getting old now. I mean, real old. I mean, real, real old. Can you hear what I'm saying? I hope you can hear what I'm saying. So here, let's get rid of that old book and give you a new book. Because because I care about you. Now, I, there's no need you trying to understand that old book. You need this new one. Boy, doesn't it sound so sweet? All the time he said, ha, ha, ha. Fool, if I get your Bible, yeah. I've got you. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And listen to me. Preachers are caught up with it. Yeah, that's right. No wonder the Bible tells us that God was having a problem with the prophets back in those days. Here, ma'am, you keep that old King James book. You're not near as old as your husband. <laughs> I'm just telling you, listen. Word of God makes us wise, Savior. Word of God, Word of God has power to produce joy. Yep. Have you noticed there are some Christians just happy? Amen. They're not on any kind of drugs. <laughs> Amen. I mean, they're not smoking something. They call. They say left-handed. I don't know what a left-handed cigarette is. Amen. Of course, I never knew what a right-handed one was. Either. But I, I, they're, they're not smoking anything. They're not drinking anything. They're not shooting anything or snorting anything. Amen. They're just reading their Bible. They're happy. Troubles and trials, oh yes. Praise the Lord, we got them. Hey, you say, praise the Lord, yeah. My friend, if I didn't have them, I'd get worried. I'd think there's something wrong. I'd get to wonder if I was really saved or not. But I got them. I got problems and problems and more problems, amen? I mean, I really do, but I'm going to tell you something. I've got a God in heaven that cares about me, and every problem comes my way. Listen. It is because He's planned them in my life. They're just storms that cause me to trust Him more. Amen. Amen. And through every storm, I can't. I come out of it saying, "Praise the Lord!" I never come out and say, "Look what I've done." Why? Because it's God that's brought me through them. Boy, right. I tell you what, He brings such joy. I mean, joy unspeakable and full of glory. As we read the Bible, we get joy. Listen, the Bible says in Jeremiah 15 and 16, Thy words were found, I did eat them, and thy word was unto me the joy and rejoicing of mine heart. Amen. Yeah. Boy, I read the Bible. I like to read in the Old Testament. I like to read about those great men that weren't so great back in those days. Yeah. We read about them now. They're boy, they're great men. They wasn't so great back in those days. You say what? No, folks didn't think of them as great. They were just somebody that just loved the Lord and just followed God. And now we look back on them. We see, we see how they lived, the outcome of their life, how God used them. And now we read and we say, man, they were great Christians. You know what? If that be the case, if that's what qualifies great Christians, we probably got a bunch here tonight on the tent. Mm -hmm. Going through some troubles of life, still got a smile on their face. Amen. I mean, going through heartaches, still praising the Lord. Hallelujah. Somebody was saying, before the service tonight, was talking. somebody was saying, well, I remember when we used to go to church and the old saint said, get up and shout and run up and down the aisles. They'd go out the door and shout around the church and run back in. <laughs> Amen. He said, well, I've never seen that. Well, just hang in here like a rusty fish hook. You'll be able to see it this week. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> We're going to have a crash course on how to shout and run. Amen. Amen. But I'm serious. Listen, why? Hey, they had troubles and trials. Sometimes they were praying earnestly over a little cotton field that didn't produce much, and this year it's going to produce even less. That's the kind of folks I'm talking about that's shouting, not really. If we don't get any rain, dear Lord, we won't get anything this year. That's the kind of folks I'm talking about. They are praying earnestly for the rain. They're asking God to help with their crops. But I'm ready to do it all. They're trusting Jesus. 
And my friend, they did as we begin to sing, Oh, how I love Jesus. They begin to lift her up and make the rafters ring. Why? In spite of all the troubles they got, oh, how they love Jesus. <coughs> Amen. <coughs> the Word of God is able to produce joy. The devil says, give me that book. You don't need it. Why? You need to be like everybody else, grumbling, griping, complaining. Last thing I want is somebody to be happy. That's the devil. Amen. Word of God produces joy. Thank God that it does. Amen. Oh, John 15 and 11 says, These things have I spoken to you that my joy might remain in you and that your joy may be full. God wants us to be full of joy. Well, why does He let troubles come our way? To make us full of joy. You see, we don't appreciate God. The problem with the United States of America, we have been blessed so long. You listen to me, we have been blessed so long, we've overlooked who the blesser is. We think it's because of some president years ago that we put in office. And so now we're blaming this president, and I'm not furry. But I just want you to know, don't get mad at me if you are. That's your problem. We're going to pray for you. So now we're blaming it on some president. But I'm going to tell you something. It's not him that's the reason that we can't shout tonight. That's right. Amen. As a matter of fact, from what I read, if they make it a law, you can't even go to church. You can't even shout. I just find in the Bible where you can do it anyway. Yeah. Paul and Silas were in jail. They weren't at the First Baptist Church. Right. They were in jail. And at midnight, they began to praise the Lord. They, hey, they lifted up their voices to Jesus. And as they prayed and praised, my friend, God sent an earthquake. Yeah. Right. You said, well, why don't we see anything like that? I don't know. God's saying, why don't I see something like that anymore? Yeah. Yeah. Talking about us praising. Yeah. Amen. Word of God produces joy. I mean, folks, I've seen folks come dragging in the church, gravel marks on their chin. <laughs> Things are going so bad. I've seen them come and get right with God, leave out and shouting and praising God. Amen! Why? They heard the Word of God and got some help. Boy, well, no wonder the devil don't want us reading the Word of God. The Word of God has power to produce joy. Last thing I want to share with you. The Word of God has power to bring peace to the heart. Peace, peace, marvelous peace. Where does it come from? Coming down from the Father above. Peace comes from God. It does not come from men sitting down behind the desk and signing a paper. It says, peace. No. We're so foolish to believe that that's how it's going to happen. It's not. We listen. We didn't have peace before the wars started. That's right. Folks have been in turmoil in their own lives and among themselves ever since the beginning of man. Why? We just won't trust God. That's the reason. Oh, there's peace for those that will trust the Lord. The Bible says this in Psalms chapter eighty-five and verse eight: "I will hear what God the Lord will speak, for He will speak peace unto His saints." Or unto his people and to his saints. God will speak peace unto his saints. Amen. In John chapter number uh, 15, verse uh, chapter 14, sorry, in verse 26 and 27, he tells us that the comforter is going to come, which is the Holy Spirit. He's going to bring all things to remembrance. In verse 27, he says, Peace I give unto thee. My peace give I unto thee. Not as the world giveth, give I unto thee, but it's God's peace that he offers us. I'm telling you, I don't have peace in this world today. I, 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 I'll be honest, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I got an unrest feeling about me in this world today. Yes. I'm, I'm just being honest with you. You, you don't know who to trust anymore. True. Amen. You just don't. I mean, that man that comes up with a big old smile and shaking your hand and, and gripping it firm and saying, you can trust me, you better look out. <laughs> Amen. It's just an uneasy feeling in this world today because that old deceiver, the devil, he's, he's, he's going, the Bible says, it's to and fro, seeking whom he may devour. He's a running all over the earth today. It's just a tough time, isn't it? Except for this. 
I do have a peace that passeth all <coughs> understanding. Tonight, we'll go back over here to the Nazarene camp. And I do thank God for that good place to stay. We'll go back over there to the Nazarene camp. Don't know any of them folks. Met one of the men yesterday. Seemed like a super nice guy. I knew he wasn't Baptist because he was very nice. <laughs> <laughs> and and we, we talked for a while. Just a very nice guy. I don't know. He's the only one I've met other than his wife is the one that works in the office. I met her when we came in Friday. And that's the only two that I know over there. There's cars in and out, people all around. I don't know them, but we'll go back home tonight over there. And we'll go in that motor home and close the door behind us. And we'll lock this lock and this lock and we'll slide this boat pin over here. And we'll put this four by six right down like this over the door right there. <laughs> No, we won't. I'll just take my nine millimeter lid up there beside my bed. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> we'll go in. We'll get ready. Time to go to bed. We'll just go to bed. And Miss Pam says, before my head hits the pillow, I'm asleep. <laughs> she gets aggravated at me. She says, I, I don't know why you do that. I just can't sleep and I keep telling if you treat me as nice as I treat you, you can sleep too. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. Confession's good for the soul. <laughs> but we'll lay our head down on our pillow and go to sleep. Not worrying about wonder if there's a I wonder if there's a, oh, who can tell what that one is? Or over there. You won't have to worry about any of that. Why? The peace of God that passeth all understanding. I mean, folks, listen to me. We might go home tonight, turn on the TV, and hear a blast on there that there's been another terrorist attack and it's been right here in our area and they're still at large and they're still bombing, killing, doing whatever else. My friend, listen to me. You say, Brother Danny, now don't tell me you would be at peace. Listen to me. Listen to what I'm saying. My friend, I, I would be at unrest, surely. Amen. But at the same time, my soul would be at perfect peace with God. Right. All I know to do is just keep trusting Him. After all, I ride the highways with a bunch of terrorists. <laughs> That's a low blow. <laughs> she said truck drivers. <laughs> That's what I was going to say. <laughs> but then, really, you get on the highway, everybody just seems to be a terrorist. They're out to get you. Amen. I mean, you never know what time somebody's going to come across that media and hit you head on. I mean, we never know. But you don't ride down the road saying, oh, that could be the one. Oh, that could be the one. Why? Listen, we have peace that God's going to take care of. When we leave a, a place, wherever it might be, we're leaving. We always pray, God, keep your hand upon us, on our motorhome, on our truck as we tow it. Lord, that we'd not hurt anyone. No one would hurt us. And we leave out. And the peace of God that passes all understanding sees us down the road. I'm telling you folks, listen to me. Where do you get this peace from? I see how men were put in jail and they were to be executed. The very next day and that night, an angel of the Lord came in the jail and walked them out through locked gates. As they get to the gate, the gates would just swing open. You say, now Brother Danny, there must have been an electric eye on that thing. Uh-uh. It was something more powerful than an electric eye. It was the eye of God. Yes. I'm telling you, that same God, as I read about this, I say, dear God, Lord, this world can't, I mean, there's a scripture in the Bible, if I knew I could find it right, it says that I'll not trust in what man can do to me, but I will trust in God. Yeah. It keeps me from that. <coughs> My friend, I am so glad that God's in control. Listen to me. I can say this with all assurance. God's in control of my life. I can't say that about yours. But I can say that God's in control of my life. 
My friend, I read my Bible and such peace comes over me in the time of turmoil, in the time of all of these things that are happening. My friend, that we read about, that we hear about. All, all I got to do is steal away somewhere and pray and open my Bible and begin to read it. And my friend, as my, my flesh is all upset, all of a sudden there's a calmness that comes over me. Why? It starts in my heart. It's the peace of God. Reading the Bible has the power to produce this peace in your life. Why don't you try it? Why don't you make time to read your Bible? Make time to get with God. You'll never be sorry of it. If I were the devil, I'd say stay away from that old book. The Christian, God encourages us throughout it. That's the reason He gave it to us is that we might have it to read it. The Bible says these the things in the Old Testament were given for our end samples or examples, if you will, that we can read and we can have and we can say, Whoa, look what God did for them. Hey, God can do the same for me. Amen. Why not tonight? Come, as Christians, come, <clears throat> kneel in an old-fashioned altar and say, Dear God, help me. We talk about revival. Lord, I want a revival to start in my heart right here tonight. I want to make, a, I want to make a, a vow to you, Lord, that I'm going to start reading my Bible. It, you say, well, how much do you think I ought to read, Brother Danny, a chapter or two chapters, a, a book, or how much? I'll tell you what, start off, no, listen, start off with two or three verses. Amen. So, you say, is that all? It's better than none. And start building on that. Start building on that. Start reading your Bible. Start reading. Pray over it. Don't just go through there and read a verse of Scripture. But meditate on what it's what has it got to say? What is it saying? Amen. It'll grow you.